Ever notice how your heart races under pressure and your thoughts get foggy? Could you be running low on water without realizing it? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're looking at how everyday dehydration can amplify your stress response and cloud your thinking, plus practical ways you can hydrate more effectively without overdoing it. I'm Ethan, and I'll guide the discussion so you can apply the findings to your routine right away. I'm Alara Skye. I focus on natural health topics, and this conversation centers on a clinical study linking low daily water intake with a 50% higher cortisol surge during a standardized stress test. We'll also cover why thirst isn't a reliable gauge, how vasopressin ties dehydration to stress, and the signs you can watch for before problems escalate. Let's begin with the study. Researchers from Liverpool, John Moores University, monitored 32 healthy adults for a week, separating them into two groups based on usual fluid intake. The low intake group drank under 1.5 liters per day. The higher intake group met recommended levels, about 2 liters for women and 2.5 liters for men. After seven days of tracking with smart bottles, everyone completed the trier social stress test. Hydration status wasn't guessed, it was measured. The low intake group showed consistently darker, more concentrated urine and higher blood copeptin, a marker tied to water balance. These are clear indicators that you're running dry even if you don't feel parched. Despite similar thirst ratings between groups, the low intake participants were measurably less hydrated. The stress response told the story. After the test, both groups reported similar anxiety and had comparable heart rate increases, but cortisol rose dramatically higher, about 50% in the low intake group. That spike matters because exaggerated cortisol reactivity is linked with greater long-term risk of heart disease, diabetes, and depression. If you know stress is coming, like a deadline or a presentation, steady hydration may help blunt that hormonal surge. Here's the key insight. Thirst did not reflect actual hydration. The low intake group felt as thirsty as the higher intake group, yet their urine concentration, color, and copeptin said otherwise. If you wait for thirst as your sole cue, you may already be behind. Subtle signals, like afternoon fatigue or a nagging headache, often show up first. Now to the mechanism. When fluid is low, your brain releases vasopressin to help you conserve water and maintain blood pressure. That's protective, but vasopressin also participates in the chain of signals that elevates cortisol. Over time, repeatedly nudging this system by staying underhydrated can add strain to your cardiovascular, renal, and nervous systems. Too much or too little vasopressin creates separate problems. Excess can promote water retention and dilute your blood. Too little or poor kidney response leads to dehydration and electrolyte imbalance. The point is balance, enough fluid and minerals to meet demand without pushing yourself into either extreme. Cognition is another piece. Even a 1% to 2% drop in body water can slow memory, focus, and problem solving. Imaging studies show mild dehydration can make brain cells contract temporarily, which tracks with slower reaction times and mental fatigue. Over longer periods, chronic underhydration is associated with reduced brain volume in older adults. There's also evidence that dehydration disrupts serotonin and dopamine function. When these messengers are off, you may feel irritable, anxious, or unmotivated. If you've noticed mood dips late in the day, consider whether fluid intake has lagged and whether the signs, dry mouth, sleepiness, or a low-grade headache have been there all along. One long-term signal hides in your blood work. An NIH analysis found that higher serum sodium, above 142 milliequivalents per liter, was linked to a 39% greater chronic disease risk and above 144 milliequivalents per liter to a 21% higher mortality risk. Participants outside the ideal range were also 10% to 15% more likely to be biologically older than their actual age. Decreased body water is the most common driver of higher sodium, so 
consistent hydration may support healthier aging. How do you recognize dehydration early? Use your urine as a guide. Pale straw or light yellow suggests adequate hydration. Dark yellow or amber with strong odor points to a deficit. Other clues include sugar cravings, constipation, dry skin, fatigue, headaches, confusion, and a drop in exercise performance. Severe signs, like sunken eyes or urinating only once or twice a day, require prompt attention. It's equally important not to overcorrect. Overhydration dilutes sodium and can trigger hyponatremia, fatigue, confusion, nausea, and in severe cases, serious neurological issues. Hydrate steadily, pay attention to your day's demands, and match fluid with electrolytes when losses are high. Let's talk strategy. Drinking when you're thirsty is a baseline, but absorption improves when you include electrolytes. A pinch of natural salt, Himalayan, Celtic, or Mediterranean, plus a squeeze of lemon or a splash of organic juice can help. You can also meet your needs with water-rich foods and beverages, watermelon, cooked vegetables, coconut water, raw milk, and herbal teas support fluid balance with minerals and natural sugars. Another angle is structured water, sometimes called exclusion zone water, which helps maintain cell shape and function. You can support this by eating well-cooked leafy greens and getting regular skin exposure to sunlight, including near-infrared and UV. These inputs assist your cells in holding water more effectively. Mineral balance matters. Many processed foods load sodium while shortchanging potassium. Aim to restore a healthy sodium to potassium ratio with whole foods such as bananas, sweet potatoes, and leafy greens. Better balance supports blood pressure control, heart function, and resilience in hot conditions. During extreme heat, hydration is necessary, but not sufficient. Avoid sugary sodas and standard sports drinks that can worsen dehydration and tax your kidneys. Choose breathable, light-colored clothing, limit strenuous activity during peak heat, and use fans, cooling compresses, or cold showers to regulate temperature safely. Bring this into your day. Keep water accessible at your desk or in your bag. Check urine color at midday. If you're sweating more than usual, from work, workouts, or weather, Add that pinch of salt and a little lemon or organic juice to your next glass. Build hydration into meals with cooked vegetables or a piece of watermelon and use herbal tea breaks to stay consistent. Here's your challenge. For the next seven days, log your morning and mid-afternoon hydration using a simple note on your phone. Each day confirm urine color by early afternoon. Add a pinch of natural salt and lemon to one glass if you've been sweating or drinking more and include at least one water-rich food. Notice your energy, mood, and clarity by evening. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.